everybody, it's Teresa here from South East London. I'd like to say a big warm welcome to lots of new subscribers, both to the channel and to the Facebook group as well. It's really good having you on board and thank you so much for your subscriptions. It really does help. So thank you very much. It actually motivates me to carry on if I'm honest. Now with my face-to-face -face groups in the past, they've always liked having their own design folder their own textile art design folder they've all enjoyed making them and just holding them and owning them there's an awful lot of work that goes in with examination work they have to it's called a portfolio then but um with those who do it a more leisurely pace maybe retired or adult ed adult education um they can be a bit more or less structured I call my notebooks or ideas folders so I thought that I would just pass this around the group around the channel to see how it goes down with everybody you might like to do this as well now I have many of these this one isn't actually finished but it's close at hand so I'm going to I'm just going to do a very quick quick flip through this video will be in two parts one is um, about what we're doing and there will be a couple of projects in there making the pages so the first part is about more or less construction but the next part will be part two will be a flip through okay. all the terms that I've used in here with regards to what this is are interchangeable you can call it an art book design book folder journal ideas book an old style scrapbook you'll find that I probably keep referring to this as a scrapbook because it is my idea of the old style scrapbooks that I used to keep well I think everybody used to keep them at one time when we were growing up and you just put pictures in there anything you liked would be glued down into this shop bought scrapbook and <laughs> it was great fun it's for you to doodle in, to put your designs in, your odds and ends, your unfinished pieces of work. And that could be a drawing, a sketch, a sketch in fabric and threads. Could be a piece of cross stitch, anything that you want to put in your design book. And as I go through this, you'll see um, what I've put in mine. Now, we'll still be looking at stitching and the elements that we use, the elements of line, shape, colour, texture composition and above all contrast but it's mostly an ideas or experience book now some of these ideas you might have seen before if you think I've seen that before then you have okay this was taken from the cutty sock that was the finished bit from the cutty sock from the sales so you you might think yeah I did that I remember that and the design notes here which I need to attach to the inside cover um, and that was the little bit from the sales that made resulted in this okay now this piece of design work is all fibers I picked up from a beach and it's just like one big circle it's actually a pinwheel, a lot, very, very large loose pinwheel with lots of weaving, lots of things that don't even have a name because I was experimenting. I wouldn't know what to call this because I was experimenting here, but it's made texture and it's on a little bit of patchwork on the background. And that I found in my box liked it popped it there and in future I might refer to these and think oh I know what I can do with these now that is ideal for a piece of work now we did this on the channel the roots so you'll probably remember that but just a couple of quick doodles I was cutting red cabbage uh, some time ago and I thought oh this is truly beautiful so this is just this is just a quick ink sketch one as you can see in black and white dark and light and one in color just to see the difference between the two and I think you'll agree there is a big difference I'm going to make this a little bit bigger because um, 
it's very hard to get this in in the screen and this um, is from tree bark it's a single line from some tree bark and that's string now that string can be interpreted later as couching or chain stitch running stitch or slow stitch any stitch that you want to produce this texture or that design and these are my notes that is actually a, bra um, a wax rubbing from that and that is this in a different colour it was just working out an idea this is page of texture I'm going to make this smaller so the texture here is that and I picked that up in a box of fruit and veg in the supermarket. That is, I'll, I'll describe what this is later actually. I believe I show this in one of these in the video. It's finger knit, in case you are curious. And this is just paint that's been allowed to run down. Now here, some of you may have seen this. This is true tree roots as well. Um, and I just love looking at trees and tree roots as regulars know. That's a PK and drawn thread, pulled thread, some Algerian eyes going on here on scrim. Um, I did say a PK, didn't I? Uh, a PK and it's scrim over a yellow fabric here and it's very raised, very textured with some beads. Here is the preliminary sketch and I did that out in the field from the shapes I saw on the tree root and you can see here the positive shape here is that shape there positive shape and that is the green and all these are the negative shapes here so positive and negative shapes there this was from a fossil this and it stretches way down the table here and this was carried out I did this work in gold thread so this was actually carried out and it was about this um I can't get this in I'm really sorry and it was about what six about 18 inches long um, and I carried it out first executed this work first in string and it just gave me a rough idea after I photocopied it and that is actually gold it's come out green um, I did it in colour here and a goldy green there to give me a rough idea of how it would actually look in gold thread and the gold th thread was very expensive and I couldn't afford to waste any so that was all carried out in um, gold thread that particular piece and here is a study in window shape. I collected these in the Netherlands. I believe those in Vienna. Those that in Bruges. And I believe that in Germany. So these were all shapes and windows that appealed to me. That I do actually have a design in my head. And I will be making notes along here. Um, so I don't forget what the idea is. I believe you've seen this tree roots once again, and that's quilting, applique, beadwork here, and then this is a doodle, literally a hand doodle, nothing else to do, sit and doodle. Now to set it off, the blue paper underneath is handmade, and it's handmade. Well, I say it's paper, it isn't paper, it's actually fabric. This is fabric paper, handmade from Calico. And I can see string, shredded string peeking out. And there's all sorts of odds and ends of fabric here. It's, it's quite sturdy, but it's great for a portfolio. So that's my hand, and that was the doodle from it. These were done out in the field as well. And that's a bit of crochet. Um, just double, oh, that's finger knit as a chain. Chain and some crochet into a flower head. 
So this is fabric manipulation and the fabric I've put on over hand, I crocheted this, this piece here is hand crocheted as is the border, the yellow border, which I have woven ribbon. The fabric was intentionally destroyed here. These are the holes that I was left with and I have sewn slow stitch or running stitch, you choose, all the way around the shapes here with a blanket stitch around the edge. Here, here we have some printing. The old style cotton reels. This is thick paint. Um, you can't see the pattern on there, but it's done with a fork. This piece, that is um, fabric, uh, sorry, not fabric, paint that was dripped on there and then squashed underneath another piece of fabric. Now this long piece here is lino print on fabric backing. The lino print is actually on paper and then I've put it on the backing to protect it really, to make it stronger. So you can put all this because sooner or later I will go back and draw inspiration from these for flowers for placement, for colour, for this. That reminds me of um, blanket stitch. That is wax on paint there. Fork painting as well. This, this is string printing and all odds and ends. That looks like the head of a big screw but I'm not sure what that is now. And some sketches, the broccoli. And you can add as many plain sheets as you want for maybe journaling or mine won't be a journal, mine will be an art design book. So these will be full at some point with bits of fabric or things like that that have been on my table for ages and ages and um, I hope to fill it up like this and more wax, more wax. Um, rubbings there and a sheet of really old I don't know where these how old this is I'm not sure if it may be 60s or before and then the back page is a design from Beach now this grew out of that so I think I spent much longer on this than I intended to but this is to give you an idea of what you can put in your art and design textile art folder anything as long as you like it and you find inspiration collect it okay all the pages are going to be this size and this is just a regular sheet of A4 printing paper and it measures eight and a quarter inches which is 21 centimetres by say 12 inches it's not quite 12 but we'll say 12 inches which is 30 centimetres now I've cut out some pieces like this all the same size as this paper that's my template so I've cut them all that size and I've also cut the same amount of iron on interfacing iron that on to all the pieces of fabric and then I will very carefully or not so carefully because it doesn't matter I'm going to then sew them along here near the edge all the way around. Now you can do this by sewing machine but you can also do this by hand sewing. You can do it with a, a nice small running stitch or any stitch of your choice. So you're not excluded if you haven't got a sewing machine. I am going to do this with um, on my sewing machine to save time but as I've just said you can do these by hand. So this will be my first task to back all the pieces of fabric that I have behind me with interfacing so I'm just going to put those there while I'm doing this I'm also going to make a fabric page 
of bits and pieces. Right, interfacing the, the sticky side up, so that is the shiny side up, and I'm going to put down lots of pieces from the rag bag, and I have them all here, and I've only taken the ones, trimmed the ones that have the flowers on them. You can pin them if you want to, or you can just do, do as I'm going to do. I'm going to put all these down as much as I can. Some of these will have to be pressed before I put them down because they're straight from the rag bag, so I haven't had time to press them, but I will press them before I put them down. And then I will cover this up with a cloth and I will press this over the cloth and hopefully they should all they should all end up being stuck down and then I might even start sewing them or I might not so my next step interface these and then sew them down and then to press these all down got lots and lots of them here I'm going to press them down onto the sticky side the shiny side of the interfacing that I didn't see. take too long to do I haven't trimmed some of them yet as you can possibly see on the screen here but I've done quite a few in different sheer fabrics and because they're sheer they're still very paper like, they're still very fine. Um, having said that, I did use a heavy interfacing on a couple, I think this one, and that one is just slightly firmer than these, which were done on a lightweight. I shouldn't worry too much about whether you use lightweight or heavy. I think I actually prefer the one that is, um, that is interfaced with the heavier the heavier interfacing but it really doesn't matter because they're not finished and here's a selection I'm not sure even if I'll be using them all but just in case I will um, I think I have enough now I have so many but we'll take two for a front and a back to be joined together so we have this on the front and something like that on the back. That, the patchwork one, from all these bits from the rag bag and I cut the flowers out. There's a nice flower there actually. Hmm, I might put that in there. But I haven't finished. Now, I have just secured it. And if you look very, very carefully, you can see some machine sewing here and here and along there and down here and across and that is just to secure the center ones which inter which have a knock-on effect on the others and keep those in place as well now if you don't want to do um, machine sewing or if you don't want to sew it at all you can always stick these down and then iron them and that will just give them a little bit more security and will stop them coming away now what I intend to do with this and I shall go off and start this in a second I'm going to give it a, pr a crazy patchwork effect along all the little seams all the little joins I'm going to stitch now I haven't decided on a stitch yet oh actually there's a piece missing there Ooh, I'll have to um pop something over that oh good grief yes there's this piece missing there can you see that that is the interfacing that's not fabric a little leaf there you go so um yeah get, get him back to what i was saying so i'm going to choose a stitch and i'm going to edge it and that stitch at the moment could be blanket it could be fly stitch uh feather stitch it could be chain it could be anything but I, need, I just need to have a look at it and see what I think will be will look best on there okay and those of you who looked at the last project the David Hockney stroke tie-dye project 
do you remember me showing you this? And it's the onion skin tie-dye. This is a little piece I, I showed you that I did with the onion skins. Well, this was earmarked for another project, but that project is just a tiny bit down the line, although I am working on it. I won't need this for a while. It's smaller than the other pages, but they don't have to be the same size. So there we are now. And then as soon as I make headway with this one, I'll get back and show you how far I've got with this. I'm quite excited about doing this. I hope it looks as nice on the screen as it does in front of me. Anyway, I'll get back shortly and hopefully I'll have, I'll have started this and covered that. So up. that is the feather stitch all done and dusted. And we'll just have a closer look to see how the first page um is looking right so oh i'm quite pleased with that i'll make this a bit bigger there we go and just as a refresh for anybody you know that is the feather stitch and that is from our first stitch book journal and that is a feather stitch again from our second book journal i'm and going just... to do some running stitch on some of these possibly just on the dark backgrounds um, so I'm going to start on this one and just small small running stitches all the way round now it's up to you how you do your stitches you might want to do it all the way round that big shape there or you might want to follow the contour of the actual flower now don't forget you can't go wrong don't let anyone tell you your work is wrong because it isn't. This is an art. Uh, it's not an exact discipline like dressmaking or quilting, which are lovely, but they are very exact and precise in their techniques. As an art, as isn't. As is more um, about freedom of expression and often let, just letting the needle take you where it wants to go just like a painter will let the paintbrush take him or her where they want to go right let me just make this bigger and we'll see how it's looking right let me take that out. oh yes yes i'm doing this page first and i'll be doing the other one the tie-dye as well after this it's just to get those pages out of the way now Hello. firstly apologies because I did get carried away my daughter came over and we spent our time yeah 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 and before I knew it a couple of hours had passed and I produced this and I thought oh my word I have forgotten to video it but it doesn't matter it's all quite self-explanatory but I will run through it I've applied some shapes here, so this one here and this one here, flower shapes. They've both been secured to the background with blanket stitch. I've got uh, some more applique here, there, and here, there, and there. And those have been secured with running stitch, although the stems on here have been um, applied or secured to the background with um, blanket stitch. I'm just struggling to see this at the moment. Also have some little bits of sparkly bits there. Now I have saved the original flowers from the background in a couple of squares like here here although i've put some running stitch around the edge here the same with that one there here i've done some stitchery on top as i have done here this is applique that was embroidered net that i've placed there kept that one in its original state and this little shape here is original uh, what have I done here? I've used a laced running stitch here and straight stitch. 
feather stitch, beads around here, chain stitch, pinwheel here and on top of that back to front black, uh, blanket stitch and French knots. Now is there anything I've missed? For the texture I have added the beads and I've also included wool. I've included some wool around here, here, here and around here and I've used the wool with um, running stitch. Now I'm scrutinising it and I can't see anything else that I've added. I think that's it. Now I'm calling this piece finished. I'm just going to make this a bit bigger and move it about so you can see what this page is looking like. This is just like a filler in page, just something nice to look at. I'm hoping that you might be able to see just a little bit of sparkle going on there. Um, where's that? Yeah, there. That is finished. The next page I'm going to do, I'm not going to do it in the style of David Hockney. I should do something else. Okay. I'm a bit limited actually, and all I can think of at the moment is David Hockney and the decreasing circles. And I'm staring at circles and it's screaming, David Hockney, David Hockney. I don't want to do that again. Instead, I'm going to do some surface stitchery across here. But I don't want it looking like a Hockney piece. So all I'm going to do, I'm, I'm consciously trying not to get it to look like that piece. So what I'm going to do is concentrate on these circles here. I'm not going to worry about the background yet. I might not might not worry about it at all. But while I was thinking of this, I had a I was just looking through the nursery brochure and I came up with this. I saw this. I'm not sure what it's called, whether that is Senetti or Senetti. I'm not sure, but that is what it's that is what it's called. But I looked at this and thought, ah, oh, three rings of colour, middle, uh, sorry, centre, then a middle ring and an outer ring. So I like this. I'm going to change the colour to suit the colour of the background. I love the colour of the background, so I'm going to use colours that go with this. So I'll probably have um, all the colours that you can see at the moment and introduce maybe a green or some greens and a yellow. Make that smaller. So I've not finished this one. It isn't finished at all. But this is the start I'm making. And I imagine um, doing similar on the other rings around here. The stitches I've used at the moment chain, herringbone, running and feather. So these are all stitches that we have used. At the moment I'm just going to carry on and basically maybe um, use all our stitches so it could end up looking a bit like a sampler but who knows, who knows, we don't know do we. Here's a little update for you and I must warn you this is totally addictive. Since the last um, scene I've been up to the surgery and I had my B12 so I'm bouncing around now with energy and this is what I came back and did and it really really didn't take that long. So let's start. The middle French knots in yellow and brown and the green chain stitch followed by more chain stitch, then a herringbone stitch and between each herringbone stitch there's a small cross stitch. Then we have running stitch which has been whipped with a yellow thread, um, sorry whipped with a brown wool and then there's running stitch here, more feather stitch then a twisted chain and over the twisted chain I did a single chain stitch in that rather nice bluey green here and then above that 
I did a long tail chain stitch. Now a long tail is a small chain chain stitch, small head with a long tail or a long leg here. And then straight stitch in between. Then French knots around here, the brown French knots. And I've finished it with a feather stitch, okay? Now, I've used both wool, uh, a double knitting wool here, there, and on the outside. Oh, and the brown chain stitch, uh, the brown French knots as well. And this lacing, or uh, sorry, not lacing, it's whipped. The whip the whipping that I did here on the chain on the um, running stitch is brown wool as well now I've used both wool and the the stranded thread because it produces a nice texture so that is nicely raised in some areas and flat in other and that is a contrast so although we're making a scrapbook there's no reason why it can't still um, adhere to the principles of our art and the contrast because this is what we deal with so our scrapbook will still be art inspired and, and art led in our practice okay so I'm now going to carry on and I'm going to do these now so hopefully the next time you see it which might even be in a couple of hours or so it could possibly be finished of course I need some bling here somewhere and I might do that with beads okay so I'll get back to you very shortly so as you can probably tell I got carried away and suddenly it was finished it didn't take very long at all and I hope you'll agree that it doesn't look anything like the David Hockney piece so I'm really pleased about that I don't feel that I've been influenced by that piece at all Oh, and by the way, it's stretching at the moment, and I'll take these pins out um, as soon as I've finished running through it. But I will make this bigger so you can see the stitches. And what I'll do, right, I'll move the book. I'm actually stretching this on a book. I'll move that instead of moving the camera. I started here with Hairy Chain. Um, I'm not happy using that pen right yeah I started there with the hairy chain and through the legs here I've put um, um, some yellow thread and it looks as if it's been couched down but it actually hasn't it, I've just threaded it through the legs as I said then I have running stitch then um, whipped running stitch here more whipped running stitch there and feather stitch chain stitch and french knots blanket stitch two rows of blanket stitch here one on top of the other then i have a reverse blanket stitch here and the legs once again have been threaded with yellow thread and two rows of running stitch then blanket stitch with a running stitch between each of the gaps here running stitch again here and then a raised chain band twisted around here and I just love raised chain band and it works so well with the blanket stitch by using the blanket stitch as the, la the ladder or the transverse threads and it's just so easy twisted chain chain and French knots now I don't think there are any new stitches um, have we done anything else no and I think any everything else we've already spoken about now I'm going to make this smaller so you can see the background uh, there we go right now the background here I'll twist it, I'll turn it this way, that's better, and you can see it all in one go. I've kept some of the areas here free. So we have a nice contrast going on here, busy, 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 
and quiet here the nice quiet the contrast in areas but I've picked out the the uh, white here and I've just gone around the white shapes with running stitch and I just think that finishes it nicely so all I need to do now is to remove oops the pins it's been stretching overnight and it's so warm it really didn't take that long to dry but there we go and I stretched it over a piece of paper well it's actually card I wet that I soaked that popped that down underneath the paper and did it on the back of an old book you can see that it's quite a thick book so it um, would take the depth or the length of the pin there so no secrets there to doing that and here it is so that is another page for the scrapbook there oh and I really like that one I really do like that so that will now be mounted on a page and popped into the scrapbook or ready for the scrapbook back now look how gorgeous that is isn't that just beautiful so just and luckily <laughs> it isn't stuck fast actually <laughs> that's come off really easy very very lightly cover this page this calico page watered down pva glue it's just general purpose white glue and i love this i love this just very very gently and lightly spread this across the area that i want to stick or where i, I want to stick the serviette ah oh that feels nice and and sticky so I'm now going to put this edge to edge as much as possible but even that doesn't matter I'll start there and very very gently without tearing it work it across with this bone folder now if you haven't got a bone folder anything will do the edge of a ruler credit card um anything really as long as it's done. just very that's better very gently pull it and you see how easy it just pulls away where the glue stops just help it there and pull that away as well and there we are now the next bit oh that is beautiful I'm, I should keep that oh I, I love that I really love that right the next thing I'm going to do is just very very lightly and gently again just run the brush almost wet oh sorry almost dry just skim the top just to give it a little bit of strength for when and if I sew over it and there we are I'm calling that finished as tempting as it is to carry on just brushing this because it's oh, it's quite cathartic I'm not going so now I want to loosen that a little bit there we are this is a silicone background so it shouldn't stick on there and if it does it should peel off and there we are so I'll give that some time to dry and then hopefully it should be um, it should be um, ooh, firm enough oh look I've, I've pulled that bit off now oh gosh I'm gonna have to leave it now just leave it leave it leave it um, yeah so it should be firm enough then to start stitching on okay so as soon as it is um, I'll choose some stitches and we'll take it from there oh I'm gonna have to ease my finger off now oh my goodness so this what? took about an hour to dry 
in front of the open window and it is really firm it's really strong um, and it just looks lovely it's just ideal now for working on so next thing I will do is to pick out some areas um, for stitching and I think I should leave that for something else that I'm, I'm not too sure about at the moment but I have I have an idea forming and hopefully um, it will just it will just fall into place now we've just looked at this one but I also did this with the piece of serviette I had over and I've just ironed this on to um, iron on interfacing and then I put the PVA on over the top the same way I did this now this is quite firm it's it's good um, I don't think it will uh, it will tear across the grain of the violin uh, sorry the interfacing it would it will tear across the grain of the interfacing but it won't tear the other way so although it looks good and it would work in um, a paper journal I'm not so sure that it would be sturdy enough to use in a fabric journal especially as I intend sewing over it I don't think it would take too many tugs from um, the thread and the needle as it passes through so anyway it does it looks good but not for what I want it for and also as well oh, I don't think you can see in this light it's very sunny um, this one is more um, antique looking than that one strangely enough I've also made some more pages this is a paper hanky I bought a packet of 10 for about a pound and they're absolutely beautiful this is where the join meets between that is the size of the actual hanky not very big is it it was four ply so it was quite sturdy and I had to join it here and I joined it there but that is no problem that can be disguised or it can be used and once again fabric backing and this was done in exactly the same way with PVA glue I just made a collage and if you look closely you can see that I have put the PVA which is just the regular white glue uh, school glue you can see the shine there from the PVA if I get the light on it now why I like to put PVA on the front of these is because I will probably or possibly sew through it at some point so it needs to be able to take the same with these it needs to be able to take um, the thread being pulled through from the back and these were hankies as well and they're done in exactly the same way PVA onto the white or the cream coloured fabric on the back so those pages they're not finished but they are now definite pages now, I found this in a box of unfinished things and I thought oh this is good for a page in the flower scrapbook it's only one two three four five six seven inches by one two three four five six seven and a bit so it's quite small um, and it's fabric a fabric background which has been interfaced and if you look closely you can see there are two parts a red part here and a green there so I put those down here and then I put lace on top and then I put down see some flowers here dotted the centers with some sequins and then covered it in this now this was intended to be hand sewn um, and I believe it was for for a class but I just didn't get around to finishing it and um, so it was stored away with so much you know so many other bits that you and I all collect but um, I thought well yeah I'm going to use that so it isn't finished and I think this will be um, 
slow stitched. I might just slow stitch this and might just use the running stitch at the moment. So I'm going to pop that away. Now I thought because this piece, oops, let me, this piece was in the box as well. And this was from a pro project at Christmas. I think it might have been um, to be folded over um, and embellished as a bottle, a wine bottle label or cover, jacket of some sort. Once again, it was in that box. So I thought, hmm, it's very similar to how I started this one. So I thought, I'm going to carry on with this for the scrapbook. And I'm going to do similar, but not the same, similar as I've done on this. But where I'm going to hand sew that one, this one, I'm going to do on the sewing machine. So I'll have two to see or compare the differences between sewing these by hand and sewing them on here by um, sewing machine. Now, I've already attached it to a page, to a page that's going into the scrapbook. Um, ah. Oh good, I can make that just a bit smaller. So this is one of the pages that we've already looked at. I've zigzagged it, zigzagged it round the edge and I've sorted out some pieces. Bearing in mind, I'm not copying it, but I'm doing basically the same. I'm being inspired by that. So it's quite easy. I just found similar resources, if you like. So I found this, and this is beautiful, but it does have a rather big hole in it. Oh my goodness. I've just made it even bigger. Yeah, can you see that hole there? Yeah, look how lovely and big that is. So I need something big to, <laughs> to cover that up with. So that fits nicely here. We have to try and imagine that the hole isn't there, but uh, we really know it is. So I'm thinking at the moment, this will go there. And then the same flowers there which I've actually ironed as well because they were crinkly I bought these at the NEC from a man who was selling oh hundreds and hundreds of these and he was just stuffing them in bags um, for anybody who wanted to buy them well I just felt it was all a bit greedy really because some people were there and they were saying to him oh a bit more a bit more and I thought oh there's more in, in that bag as it was and um as I, he served me, I said, I only want a bag. And he said, oh, you're the only one who said, don't fill it up, don't fill it up. And I said, no, I just want enough. I don't want to take all your stock. And because I said that, <laughs> he overfilled it. And I felt so uncomfortable. I said, I really don't want all those. Um, it's very kind of you, but please take some out. No, 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 he said. No, you're the only one who, who hasn't asked to fill it up and oh, split the bag. And I walked away, and I, I did, I felt very uncomfortable. But anyway, that was how I got a hold of these at the NEC. So, you know, thank you to that man, because they are very, very useful. Now, I have options. I can place these, or some of them, under there. Oh, or not. Let me have a look here. Oh. Well, actually, I need to cover that hole up. Um... Now, I will also cover this with this net. How will that look? Oh, no, I thought this was going to be easy. Do I want them underneath as well as on top? But I'm worried about this big hole, so that could go there. Now, I can see on the screen that this is a little bit out of sync. Yeah, it's, it's a little bit out of sync. I don't know why. Um, so I hope it holds out to the end of this. I have some here. Because that's out of sync, I think I'll do that off camera. Now, if you haven't got any shapes, flower shapes, run off a template from the internet or draw your own freehand. Um, I thought that was a... Just draw around some. This is actually a dog's paw. But it would make a nice um, flower. It's a torch little torch there from the dog's trust um, but that would make a nice flower shape so just 
make a paper shape from that and then draw around it in felt or any fabric that you have now this is fine because it doesn't fray but if you were to use a fabric that frayed just interface it as well with some light interfacing and that will stop stop it fraying or from your fabric stash just cut out some flowers and use those instead I've now put these into position and I've actually used some glue now I'm not a lover of using glue on some work it is really good to use as tacking okay but I suppose I went through the old school where it was a definite no no and um, it's sometimes it's hard to get out of those old-fashioned silly ways isn't it but I've used it on these these are now in place with the print stick or the glue stick this one if we go back to this one I put the sequins down before I put the layer of net down now that's okay because this is going to be hand sewn but I can't really do that here because of the risk of breaking the sewing machine needle so I'll be putting the sequins on or the centers after I've machine sewn it the next step before I machine sew it is to put the net down now this net is wonderful because it gives it just a little bit of mutedness for the color it, it just strips a tiny bit of color away it has a little bit of dimension and it just makes it easier to work with to be honest so I'm going to pop that there and then I, I take it from my roll and I put this here and it doesn't matter that it overlaps because once again that adds just a little bit more interest to the colour and I'm going to tack it oh that's tough oh, I hope my machine needle is going to be okay oh, I'm not going to tack it I've just said I'm going to tack it but I'm not going to I'm going to jump in with two feet and just start machine sewing it and I'll start by sewing around the edge to clip the edges and then um, I won't have to worry about sewing over pins and breaking the needles I decided to scribble the background so that's all scribbled and then I couched down the wool that you can see here couched it down with a zigzag stitch now these flowers here this one and this one are actually on top of the net that one's been scribble sewn down at the moment that one hasn't I'm not sure whether to scribble that one down or do that by hand I haven't finished it I might add a little bit of hand sewing around here somewhere and just dot a couple of these with some buttons or some sequins just to make them stand out I shall make this a little bit bigger so maybe you can see the stitches better the scribble right what I'll do is I'll move this very very slowly and then you'll get an idea of how it looks close up and what I have done as well I've taken the wall here I'm um, moving it across slowly I've taken the wool off the ends of the page I like that look so I'm leaving it like that it's the same at the bottom as well and at the side here now I'm just very slowly going to move this down um, there you go so you can see the scribble I've deliberately left this blank there without anything there because I think that space complements um, all the busyness here so that deliberately left uh, blank that's that is one of our negative spaces we have more negative spaces here I've left blank and some at the bottom that we haven't got to yet so this is how it's looking these flowers here I don't know whether to add a little bit of stitchery on those or leave them there's the flower that's been scribble sewn onto the net so there's no net covering that whatsoever and this is a really pretty wall I have no idea what that's called but as you can see there are blocks 
of like thread maybe every inch oh my goodness who's that out there um, and once again I've taken it off the page yeah you see that hooray these two are both finished now and they'll be ready to mount on the pages although I think this is possibly a page on its own I'll just quickly go through them and let you see um, what I've done to this um, it was machine scribbled as you know and all I've done here is added where is it I didn't want any hand stitch on here but I couldn't resist so I have I have actually just followed one of the lines of machine sewing all the way around in running stitch and then I remembered that I said I didn't want any hand stitching on here so I finished um, I think I might have shown you the sequins before so the sequins are in place I don't think there's any great shakes on that now right so, what did I do on here I've done quite a lot on here actually and it's all been done by hand this one the surface stitchery here on these petals here's all feather stitch the greens feather stitch but the outlining brown is blanket stitch all in three strands of um, embroidery skein I thought I had it here but I can't see it so that's finished this one here as well this is blanket stitch and it's done to fill the spaces this one's been used as an edge edging around the edge but this one has been used to fill the, the space here so it's legs are stretched if you like and then between the legs I've woven some yellow wool and that is woven and not couched okay so what have we got over here and this is actually my favorite piece this is feather stitch as well stretched to the shape of the pale green leaves underneath got a couple of, of crosses here cross stitches not too sure if you saw the French knots before I can't remember but here we have that is actually chain stitch pulled tightly and it looks like satin stitch um, and the last one here once again this is blanket stitch to fill the spaces and then the the top of the blanket stitch has been interlaced with uh, sorry it's been whipped with the same color thread and then I've woven some more of that yellow wool from there I've woven that through these legs here and then added some cross stitches and I will make that bigger so you can see the cross stitches so I don't know if that feather got in the way so I'll move some I'll use something else so where did I get yeah the cross stitches here now the cross stitches here are in the same color as the outline here which match these brown uh, petals as well so some of them I haven't done I haven't put any stitchery on at all I've just left it so that you can see the net so we have a contrast between the flatness of the net on the pet the petals and the raised areas here with the surface stitchery um, that that looks very orange on the screen but it isn't actually it's a nice pink color well that's a nice color on the screen but the colors look brighter on the screen than they actually do in front of me but I do have a lamp on so I expect that's um, shining and then haunts in the colors so those two are finished this is um, another unfinished piece that I found in my box some of you might recognize the background the very basic background um, because I think it was used to illustrate something but I can't remember what or even if it was with this group now these were ready bought shapes I uh, bought them in Poundlands oh, a long long time ago and I sewed them down with straight stitches and French knots 
and I think they've all been treated the same way there might be some chain stitch on a couple of them but basically it's just all straight stitch and there are three flowers on top of each other um, in three different sizes from large to small so this was a really nice task there wasn't much to do um, it was about overlapping and applique but over the time um, I added a little bit a few leaves I added the doily and a few other flowers and these Christmas flowers which I cut in half and put down um, and I've added these you might recognize these flowers as well so this has been an ongoing experiment if you like for a long long time I went off it I lost interest because I put the black piece down and I realized I didn't like it I need to soften the edge I need to soften the edges with something and I think it's time now that to carry on with this to pop it in my scrapbook uh, my idea scrapbook progression of an idea whatever and I think maybe I could soften if I turn that round now that's better you can see that better um, if I soften the edges with something I think it's going to make it easier on the eye than having this line that line is no good um, it was going to be sewn over but um, it was having the time at that time and um, there were other things to do oh wow well. <laughs> well already that looks better so I have those from my curtains um, I also found this as well now this looks like crochet but it isn't it's just a chain with a crochet hook we used to call it finger knitting and it's just uh, lengths and lengths of chain stitch or chain sewn down on to the backing of a leaf and I did quite a lot of these and used quite a lot of them and they look really nice now this shape echoes the shape of these but I don't know if it might be too big it might be too loud oh I don't know um, I could disguise some of that edge or I don't really want to cover up too many flowers oh heavens that's um, that's <laughs> I do like this so I would like to use it at some point I have a couple more as well yeah I think I'll say that for something else but meanwhile I might go back and look at these oh that's a different one. Oh, I have three of them oh yeah I might go back and look at these and work out something just to soften that edge even like that without covering up oh I don't really want to cover up too much doily either because that looks really pretty so there's a couple of things that I need to think about before I carry on with this so this is another page and that will make a whole page in itself um, oh yes I forgot to say that it has been machine sewn down at some point just to hold the flowers in place and they're all nice and secure I'm not too sure about this one actually this bottom one there carried away again and I've actually finished this page I've carried on overlapping and using applique and I've added more flowers on the surface now I have it this way so you can see it see all of it but I'm just very very carefully now going to turn that round and we'll go through what I've done I didn't like the flowers that I put here the ones with the pink the pink heads uh, it looked <laughs> it looked too fussy even more fussier than it does now but to soften the edges I put a herringbone stitch around there around the dark box and it looks so nice I thought I'm going to carry on so I've 
put some more herringbone as you can see where it is in red and yellow I've added some blanket stitch here and I put some thread underneath because I wanted to bring out some of the green from some of these flowers if we look down this way the, there's some green thread here and I thought it would be nice just to bring those out now I've also well I've exploited the yellow a little bit actually you see the yellow poking out here I thought this is a really nice summery flowers spring um, and I thought I'm going to bring the yellow out and luckily enough I found these now I think I might have shown the Facebook group this when I bought it um, I have cut it up obviously as you can see and why I have done that is because it's it isn't handmade it's mass produced it's modern it's contemporary so there are thousands of these round about everywhere so I didn't have any qualms about cutting these up I've placed them on the top to break up now all the busyness but I'm not really sure if I've broken it up <laughs> or I've added to it I think I might have added to it but see this is what I like to me more is more so um, I had to stop myself putting some more here but I thought no because I like the overlapping effect but if I'm going to start overlapping everything there was no point in putting these down in the beginning so I'm quite happy with how it looks at the moment I might put some stitches around these they're deliberately left raw and ragged I like that um, but I'm not sure whether to leave them as plain plain edges against the very fussy that's the contrast isn't it so I need to think about that just for a little while now I have started to assemble the pages well with this one actually I'm going to make this smaller and hopefully get this all in and then you can see I'm going to push the camera up slightly that's better and you might see that now see that a little bit better I'll just run that up slowly there we go so what have I done for the pages there are two pages here this one and there's one here now this is handmade paper I made this some time ago you can see here I've edged I've edged it well it looks as if I've edged it here but the edging I'm talking about is this little bit of lace there now I've joined these two pages with Ah, oh, I haven't got a strip on this one so what I've done I cut this larger it's an anti-macassar it's a chair back and I've just sewn them together now on other pages that I'm assembling at the moment I have actually put a strip there now this will be covered up with either a freestanding page a single page here and here or a double page similar to this and I'll put the wrong sides together and start making the pages up that way so this is how far I ha I've got at the moment I'm going to call this one finished for the time being I do hope you like this it's um, I know it's fussy but I think the regulars will know oh, I don't think they'd expect anything else would you would you all sewn up as you wouldn't expect anything else but fussy and I apologize for my nails but I've been dyeing fabric and um, normally I, I just touch them up when I come here so anyway I'm going to carry on now and I'll get back to you very soon this is the next page that I'm going to do and all it is shop bought flowers secured down with some straight stitches the yellow I, let me make this bigger so you can see this right there we go so they're secured down with um, yellow thread and there's a tiny pinwheel in each one with some green 
uh, French knots evenly spaced around the petals and one in the center now this was never finished can't even remember what it was supposed to be so I'm going to pick this up and I'm going to run with it now um, and I might um, go for the shiny bit you can see the stars here and there's a lot of contrast going on here we have the shiny surface of the star which has which have um, all been secured with straight stitch through the center of the sequin and around and back up through the center and around so we have a shiny bit of the the uh, star against the matte surface of the flower we also have here um, they're divided these into six petals these into five like triangles so we have the roundness here of the star uh, sorry of the petals set against the sharp angular um, points um, and angles here inside of the star so although it's basically only tacked in place if you like that was all that was ever done um, there's already contrast going on I carried um, on with working around these flowers here but um, it really didn't look much to be honest I didn't know whether to cut the fabric down just around those those flowers or to be a bit bolder and put bits around the edge well these are the bits that I had here at the back of the table so I haven't gone looking for these they were just here so I thought right I'll try and do something with those so as you can see I have actually put them in place now I can't move this too much because they're not tapped in place they're just they've each got a pin in them to hold them down um, but the flowers I did some running stitch around them oh, look I'll make this a little bit bigger there we go now now you can see the center of the flowers this flower and that flower I started to to sew with blanket stitch around the edge and then some little weaving between the legs and then some running stitch and some um, what, twisty chain stitch there oh I forgot for a minute um, and I did the same here and it still wasn't looking much so I, I carried on with this um, my heart wasn't in it it just didn't look right it didn't feel right so that is when I grabbed for the blingy bits here and here and a little bit over in this corner and where are we here and a little bit oh where is it gone and there and a little bit there so they've all been pinned down now and then I have covered it with black net so I'll make that smaller and you can possibly see the darker areas like here where I've got the black net just on the black felt here and little bits there and here the paler areas are where like here and here and down here that's where the black net has been placed on top of white net or a whiter fabric it's mostly lace apart from uh, this bit here and the bit there I think it's all a form of lace and net yes yes it is so it's just those two pieces there that are um, fabric if you like and these all the rest are lace so next thing I'm going to do I'm just going to trim around the edge oh I've used wool here these larger stitches around here the the orange and the yellow um, is wool and everything else um, yes everything else is embroidery thread so before I start sewing I just want to, to take this off because um, it's a great 
big overlap here and that will just be flapping around just like going to do it not too carefully actually and then once this is done it will look different again so well, I don't think there's much here to do there and of course there is a join running through the centre where two small pieces of black net here um, where are we that's a join but hopefully that that won't notice and to be honest it really doesn't matter if it does notice right so there we are I've trimmed off some of that it still needs a, uh, another trim later but at least that will make it easier to work with now I think another way of looking at this to see how it is looking or how it will look is to place the frame over it like that and that will basically be the size of the page that this will go over so yeah it might not be too bad once I've finished that looks quite nice and if I move it around like that I could end up with a different looking page altogether with a bearing in mind the pages in in these notebooks are mostly experiments and just tryouts although you have seen some of them before I know um, but the majority are just notes so I should carry on now the stitch I'm using is going to be a long stitch we did long stitch before some time ago I think we did it on a tote bag if I remember rightly long stitches shouldn't be any longer than half an inch and you can space them as you like it isn't like sashiko um, where it's precise where it has to be precise it's just like a big running stitch okay so that is the stitch we're going to use I will possibly use three strands of thread and a needle, a nice sharp pointed needle. I might even use a sashiko needle to do this and they're the long needles, very long needles with a nice sharp point. Okay so I'm going to crack on with this and hopefully and here it is it. finished with the long stitch. Look quite closely, you can see that some of them aren't straight but it doesn't matter it really doesn't matter at all about that so the next part is to make this up into a page so, two sides one two on the back of that is handmade paper from um, a napkin or a serviette here and the same on the back here and then they were sewn together with a strip to hold them together now I'm going to do basically the same here I think that one will go there and this one will go here now this is something I I found as well in my old portfolio I might actually leave this just as it is machine uh, patchwork with machine sewing on top <laughs> oh I might do a bit of embellishing on there I'm not sure yet I've I think I'll probably keep this one actually as a background page and let's just see what happens but for the time being I'll move that out of the way and these two will be joined together and this is how I've joined most of the pages I like to put it on the front here it just gives it that sort of scrapbook stroke portfolio ideas book um, it gives it an art idea feel rather than have it very very neat I just think oh, our idea books the design books should be like this and then you can actually decorate this embellish that with washi tape stitchery more applique whatever you want to do whatever you're inspired to do so to get back to this the next thing I'm going to do is machine sew this along there and along there and then I'm going to place it on here which will mean covering up both sides but that's okay this is just our fabric pages which we made to do this 
so it will be wrong side to wrong side wrong side to wrong side and these will by this, that time be joined here okay so that is the next part and then I'm going to hopefully think about joining these together all the way down the seams they will be either hand sewn or they'll be machine sewn probably in groups of four depending on how thick these pages are okay so I'm going to do this now and then I'll get back to you very so shortly. it's been sewn all the way up there and around here and it's held the two pages together lovely to make a double page so this is the outside or the inside it doesn't matter and that is the other side I've already started embellishing that page there so and that is how it will look either that way so it opens like this or I can have it this way so those pages it will open like that I trimmed all the way around the edge to get all the surplus off and I did actually get quite a lot just trim with that trimming knife there and there was quite a lot that came off so I'm quite pleased with that I'm going to give it a press along there now and just to press around the edge and now I'm going to continue to do all the pages in exactly the same way as I've just shown you and all the pages will be constructed like this and I'll do a flip through of how far I've got I might even have finished my design folder in part two 